There are fundamental questions that arise in the human heart. Where do we come from? Why are we here? Where are we going? What is the meaning and purpose of life? The Bible addresses these questions. The Bible begins with the book of Genesis. Genesis is a word that means the beginning. And the book of Genesis is not a book about geology or paleontology. It's not about evolution or the origin of life in that sense, but it's about where we ultimately come from and where ultimately we are destined to go. It's about the meaning and purpose of life. It's about what it means to be a human being. It's about what is good about us and what the problem is and how the problem is to be fixed. The book starts off with the story of creation. Everything that is comes from the hands of a good and loving God, and everything that he has made is good. Everything that is created is created through the Word, through God's eternal Word of love. And the Holy Spirit is also part of the story, for the Spirit broods over the creation, and through the Word and the Spirit, God brings forth his good creation. And the creation is a process. First, there's the day and the light, and then there's the solid earth and the water, and then the things that swim in the water, and then the things that grow on the land, and then the animals. And God looks at everything that he's made, and he says, it's very good. And then God says, let us make man in our image. Now, if you were reading this story in the ancient world, you would recognize what kind of story it is. It's the story of how a temple has been built. And what you would now expect is you would expect the story of how the statue at the center of the temple, the image of the God, has come to be. That place in the story in the book of Genesis, we hear God saying, let us make man in our image. The image of God in this story is not to be some statue, it's to be a living man. And God creates Adam out of the ground. Adam is just a lifeless thing until God breathes his own spirit into him. And then God looks at Adam, and unlike everything else that he's made so far, he says it's not good. The man is alone. It's not good. He needs a helpmate. And the, the human being is the man and the woman together, the human community. And it takes the human community to image God in the midst of the creation. And the man and the woman are given a divine task. They are to be God's stewards and under God to reign over the creation and to take care of it. And they are meant to have hands that go up to God in praise and adoration and worship and out to each other in love and service. And it's paradise. But then evil enters into the story. There are trees in the garden, and they can eat of any tree that they want, but there's one tree that they should not eat of. And the tempter says, if you eat of this tree, you'll be like God. You can determine what is good and what is bad for yourself. You'll be the boss of yourself. And so they listen to the tempter, and they rebel against God, and they turn away from God, and inevitably, in turning away from God, they turn on each other and they turn in upon themselves. The great Christian saint and theologian, St. Augustine, was asked about the nature of sin, and he said, sin is the human person in curvatus in se, that is, the human person turned in upon him or herself. And the consequences of sin flow on now through the human family. And the first two brothers fall to fighting among themselves, and Cain kills Abel. And God's plan for his creation and his plan for the man and the woman and their capacity to be the image bearers of God have all gone wrong, and it all needs to be put right. And as we go through the book of Genesis, there's story after story in which it goes wrong and God has to pronounce his judgment that it's wrong, and God has to correct what has gone wrong. But there's also 
in this story of judgment and correction, the story of mercy and grace.